welcome to another QuickBooks training moment with Steiner Business Solutions. My name is Doug, and today we are going to be going over um, posting tra bank transactions that have downloaded from your bank into QuickBooks Online. Uh, it's a similar process to the desktop version. I'll go over that in a different video because there are a few differences. On a previous video, I showed about how to connect your QuickBooks Online to the bank account. This time, we're just going to go over actually posting the transactions and how that works. So on the home screen, you can see all the different bank and credit card accounts, loan accounts that you may have connected to off to the right here. So you can see what their balances are. You can see in the little circles to the right that shows how many transactions have downloaded that you have not posted yet. So let's go into that bank download screen. We're going to hit transactions, banking. Now it's going to bring us to the bank download screen. And across the top, you see little cards for every account that you've connected to uh, that's, that are downloading the transactions. Again, in the lower right hand corner you can see the number of transactions that you have downloaded but have not posted yet. What's important to understand is once the, the transactions download from the bank, they have not posted to your general ledger yet. Okay? They have not posted to your chart of accounts, so they're kind of sitting in like a, a holding pot waiting for you to tell it where to go. Um, also on these little cards you can see when the last time the transactions were downloaded were so this says moments ago if it, it should download periodically on its own but if it's not you can always hit the update button and it'll connect to all these banks and just download the most recent transactions so if we scroll down here this is where we can see um, all of the transactions that have downloaded but have not posted yet if you see it on this screen that means it is not posted to your general ledger it's not showing up in your profit and loss it's not showing up in the vendor accounts or anywhere. It's not showing up anywhere except for on this screen. Um, you'll notice that some of the items are highlighted in green. Okay, and you can you see a tab here that has all the transactions. There's 23 of them, and then there's 15 that are recognized. If we click on that, it's going to show us just the recognized transactions. And what that means is they're either matches. QuickBooks has found something already posted in QuickBooks for this bank transaction that it thinks might be a match or sometimes I don't see any here right here all the way at the bottom you'll see this is not a match but it's saying well we've found we've seen books by Bessie posted before and when you did it before you posted it to legal and professional fees bookkeeper and so it's trying to help you by remembering that for you and saying do you want to post that again again it's not going to do it until you tell it to but it's asking do you want to post it to that account again um, so if you want to quickly go through the recognized ones, you can click the recognize tab and then go through them a little more quickly, get those out of the way, and then you have to spend a little more time on the ones that are not recognized. So for example, the one we were just looking at, it was recognized, the Books by Bessie, I can say, yeah, that's where I wanted it to go again. Pretty much every time Books by Bessie, and I, you know, I purchase anything from Books by Bessie, that's where it's going to go, legal and professional. So it already takes the download, it puts it to the right vendor, and puts it to the right expense account. All you have to do is hit Add. All right. Then let's take a look at the matches. Okay, anything that says match, well, let's let's look at the green matches first, because the green matches is saying QuickBooks is saying, all right, we downloaded this particular transaction from the bank, and we found something in QuickBooks that looks a lot like it, so we think it might be the same amount. And for criteria, it's looking for, first of all, it has to be the exact same dollar amount. If it's not exactly the same dollar amount, it will not match it. Um, and then it has to be within a certain date range. I don't know what that range is, but it, it's within a few months. It'll, it'll try to match things. Uh, so you do have to be careful. If the transaction posted from the bank in February, um, it might potentially try to match it to something is back into December or even November so you want to make sure if it does try to match it to that that it's matching the right thing in this case it's saying okay this transaction downloaded is a deposit for 868.15 but we see a deposit in QuickBooks already on February 14th for 868.15 so you already posted something for this amount and it happens to be the exact same day so this is the bank date this is the date of the transaction in QuickBooks so you have to be careful of that and make sure it's the right thing. But if it is correct, you say, yeah, those are the same transactions. That means I don't want to post it again because if I do, it'll, it'll duplicate it. So we're going to hit match. And then it'll match it and basically makes this transaction from the bank download screen go away so it doesn't duplicate it. Um, if you see 
a gray match, what that means is it's found multiple things that could be potential matches. So it needs you to look at a little bit further and decide, are one of these a match? So this is a $75 uh, payment that went out from the bank. That's what it found on, on February 14th. And it's found two different transactions that could be matches. You've got an expense that you booked into QuickBooks for $75 on June, uh, February 14th. And you've got a bill payment to Books by Bessie for $75 on February 12th. So it's saying, well, both of these, either one of these could be matches. So you have to tell QuickBooks which one it is. If you choose whichever one it is that you think is the correct match or that you know is the correct match, don't do it unless you know it's a match. Uh, and then you hit match. Now let's say, for example, it's neither one of these things. So well, now this is a completely separate $75 transaction. Well, then in that case, you can hit the add button instead of being matched, choose add, and now you can choose who the vendor is and what the expense account be. And post it to that transaction. Um, if you were doing uh, tracking expenses by job or customer, you could put the customer here and that way it'll track that expense by that job. If you use class tracking, in this case this sample company doesn't have class tracking turned on. If it did, you would see another drop down menu here for, with the classes and you could choose which class that expense should go to and then you would hit add now let's say this needs this expense needs to be divided into multiple categories it's not all going to office expense well you would hit the split button and now it brings up this window and now I can put multiple I can divide it into multiple payments and put some of it to office expense and some of it to legal and professional expenses. Now I've got 25 going to legal and professional and 50 going to office. And there you go. And now it divides it. Now it's the, the $75 total. I hit save and add and it's posted that. So that's how you can post to matches. That's, you know, in this case, the A1 rental. It doesn't find anything. It doesn't see any history of you using A1 rental before. It doesn't have anything in the, the QuickBooks that's a match. So you have to tell it who the vendor is, uh, and you have to tell it what the expense category is, and then hit add. Another thing you can do is you can do things, you can do batch posting. So let's say you've, I always recommend you look through these matches. Don't assume that they're correct. Chances are that they are correct, but there are occasions where QuickBooks will match to the wrong thing, and you need to know that. So you're, the only way you're going to know that is if you double check and quickly just look through here and say, okay, this is, this is what the bank transaction says over here. This is what QuickBooks is trying to match it to. This is the QuickBooks transaction it's matching it to. And you quickly look it over and say, oh, is that right or not? So if let's say we've looked through all these matches here, and we're pretty confident that these matches are all correct. So we could hit match one at a time, match them one at a time, or I can check all these off at one time and go up here to batch action, and I can hit accept. That way it'll post all those match transactions that I put check marks by at one time. Okay. Another thing you can do with the batch actions, instead of we hit accepted, I could hit exclude, and that basically means delete. Okay, so let's say any of these transactions, you know this particular A1 rental is already posted. You've confirmed by looking into the QuickBooks file that it's already been posted, so I don't want to post it again. For whatever reason, it's not finding it as a match, and that does happen occasionally. It's not matching it. QuickBooks isn't automatically matching it. So we're going to go ahead and click check this and, and hit exclude and that way it will uh, basically delete it from the bank download screen. Remember it's not deleting it from your GL because it hadn't even posted to your GL, GL yet. Um, another thing you can do is if you click on this if it's a transfer that's when you're actually transferring it from one category to another. So in other words like a bank transfer, a loan transfer, something to that effect. Uh, if it's an actual transfer that would indicate that you know this is this is something coming out of this particular cash account so we have to say okay which cash account is it going into so we would pick one of your other cash accounts and choose that now it's booking it as a transfer all right and then finally there's uh if you if you have something let's find a transaction and it's not showing up as a match but again you you're confident that it is a match there's something else that's already posted or the, this transaction has already been posted, you can hit find match. 
and it will bring up a screen of transactions that have not been matched to anything yet and you can scroll through here and try to find the matching transaction. This kind of works well sometimes and other times it doesn't, I'll be honest. don't know why, but if you're confident that it should be a match, you know you posted that transaction before, then click this button, it will open up the screen and you can choose which transaction it should be a match with. Otherwise, you can just exclude it. If you, again, if you're 100% sure that that transaction has already been posted, you can just uh, hit exclude. So that's how you, you uh, post your transactions. One note I will make. If you download a transaction to the screen and then post it, and then later delete it for some reason, you go into your GL uh, and find out maybe it was a duplicate or something like that, for whatever reason you need to delete it. If you delete that transaction after you posted it here from the bank download screen, it will put that transaction back on the download screen. It will put it back on this screen as if it were waiting to be posted again. This is something that's different. I'm not sure why it works this way. And this is different in the desktop version of QuickBooks. In the desktop version of QuickBooks, if you delete a transaction that was originally posted from the bank download screen, the bank feed screen, then it just goes away. But for some reason in QuickBooks Online, if you delete a transaction that you had posted from the bank feed screen, when you delete it, it deletes it off of the GL, but it puts it back in this bank feed screen as if it were waiting to be posted again. So you have to be very careful of that because then you could come back to this screen and not recognize that it was the one you deleted and then you post it again. Okay? And that's obviously not something you want. So um, be careful of that. That's a little warning. But that's how you download and post transactions from the bank screen. I uh, hope this was helpful. Check us out, Steiner Business Solutions, on Twitter. LinkedIn, Facebook, all the social media sites. Um, you should see a link on the screen to subscribe to our page and that way you'll get uh, emails every time we have I, I put out new videos every month. You'll be the first one to see them. Um, check out our page for all the other videos we have. Like our page, like the videos. Uh, appreciate it and uh, check out our website SteinerBusinessSolutions.com and see all the different services we offer including QuickBooks training. We can do one-on-one -on -one training face-to-face -face or uh, we can do it remotely as well. So thank you. Have a great day.